Whenever I'm learning a new feature in Excel or pretty much any other program, I always appreciate when I see somebody use the feature in a way that I don't think that was actually intended to be used. Let's take, for example, the upcoming feature to be released in Excel, the new checkboxes. I'm guessing the way most people will use the checkboxes will be something like this, where I have a column of prices, and we want to know if the customer is a loyalty member or not. Because if they're a loyalty member, we're going to give them a 10% discount. So the checkbox is a great way to say whether somebody is a loyalty member or not. So if I check the box, they're a loyalty member, they're going to get this new adjusted price. If they're not, then they get the old price. So I can go in here and I can check these boxes and get these new adjusted prices. Now, if you're curious how I made these checkboxes, I've got a whole video that goes into detail on the creation, modification, use of them. So check out the link in the upper right corner or in the video description. These checkboxes are being used by an if statement and the if statement just checks to see if the box is checked, it's true, so I'll perform the true action. If the box is not checked, then it's false, so I perform the false action. So if it's true, apply the discount. If it's false, just carry over the original price. So we're using the checkbox to change something else. But what if I want to have something else change the checkbox? So here I have a list of phases and tasks that need to be performed. And if somebody's been assigned to the task, I want there to be a green check next to the task. If somebody has not been assigned, then I want the box to be empty. So we're not going through and checking these boxes. Instead, we're going over here to another column where I have a drop-down list, and this is just a data validation drop-down list that's reading these employee names. But if I go to the drop-down list and I pick one of these employees, I want that checkbox to become checked. So here I can pick a different employee and the box is checked. So whenever somebody's been assigned, I can see from the checkbox that the task is in an assigned state. If I take somebody off of that task, the check is removed and I know that that task has not been assigned. So how do we get this to work in reverse? Since the new checkbox will only respond to true or false, we need to come up with a test that will detect when there is content in a cell. So if this cell is empty, I want a false. So that way the checkbox will be cleared. If I put something in this cell, I want this to return a true. Now we don't have an is populated function, but we do have the opposite of that, an is blank function. So if I say equals is blank, and I point to this cell, it returns a false because the cell is not blank. If I delete the contents of the cell, it returns a true because the cell is blank. Now a blank cell would return a true, which would give me a check. I want the exact opposite of that. So all we had to do is take this is blank function and wrap it inside of a not function because the not function will just turn trues to falses and falses to trues. So we can see here, this cell is returning a false because it's empty. If I pick something from the list, now it's returning a true. Now all we have to do is take this formula and fill it down our form. Now obviously I don't want to see all these trues and falses, so I'll highlight the cells that have the not is blank functions, and then we'll go up to insert, and in the control section, we'll click checkbox. Now while I have these selected, I'm going to go up to home and change the color of the checkboxes to green. Notice when I hover over the checkbox, I don't get the ability to actually check the checkbox like the normal checkbox feature would use. Instead, when I go over to the assign to and I pick somebody from this list, the checkbox becomes populated. So I'll pick another person, pick another person, pick another person. So now I'm using the checkboxes in reverse. So by picking a person, I can see that that task has been assigned. I can't uncheck the checkbox and clear that person, but if I remove a person from a task, the checkbox goes away. So that's what I would call a reverse use of the checkbox. And if you want to call it a reverse checkbox, that sounds good to me. At this point in time, the checkbox feature is still in beta. Hopefully it'll be released soon. But if you've got access to it and you've come up with some creative ways to use it, let me know in the comments what those ways are. I'd love to see them. And hopefully this feature will be released fairly soon. And don't forget, you can download this file via a link in the video description. Thanks for watching. And remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.